I'm Josephine Kay, here at the Celebrate Our Salmon Open House, put on by OSCA, the Okanagan Similkameen Conservation Alliance. We heard the Okanagan River Dam today to learn more about how sockeye salmon are important to us here in the Okanagan. So uh, Eco Studies funds this program, the Celebrate Our Salmon program, and so grades one or K to four uh, come here um, or to a site in Oliver, and they learn all about salmon. They learn all about rivers, all about um, how important salmon are, um, and yeah, it's really great. They love it. And why do you feel that it's important to educate our students um, about the salmon? Because uh, uh, a lot of kids, um, you know, if they live in a city, um, you know, Penticton's not very big, but there are still our areas that, you know, are mostly houses. And if you don't get out in nature, you're not going to ever learn about it. And if you don't learn about it, um, then you can never appreciate it. And hopefully in the future, they're more inclined to protect it and to protect natural spaces. This is a not a very good run this year. Um, there aren't a whole lot of salmon right up here near the dam. There were last year during a good run. Um, can't see very many right now, but the salmon um, are spawning all the way up and down the channel, um, all the way down to Oliver, Suyasin, and down into the States. Um, and so, yeah, so each, each salmon will create a little nest and lay eggs, and um, sockeye salmon will, will die after they spawn. Uh, but yeah, that's what all the, all the fuss is about. And why would you say the run is smaller this year than, than the previous years? Uh, there's a lot of reasons that really go into the size of a salmon run. They, they naturally boom and bust. They'll naturally have high years and low years. Uh, it's thought this year that a warmer ocean temperature um, kind of uh, reduced their food. And so if a salmon can't eat enough, then it doesn't have the energy to make it all the way up here. So the sockeye salmon, um, the ones that you see now spawning, they're probably about... Uh, four years old or so, so um, they'll be laid in the, in the river, they'll go down to Skaha Lake um, a little while after they hatch as fry. They spend a year in Skaha Lake or, or whatever lake they, they you know, make it to, um, growing a little bit and they do uh, go all the way down the Columbia. They, they cross nine dams to get down to Astoria, which is near Portland in Oregon. And then they spend about two to three years in the, Atlantic, or in the Pacific Ocean, um, you know, eating, just, you know, being fish and and just growing and then they they come back here they they come all the way up to exactly where they were born most of them not all of them uh, which is pretty amazing it's one of those big big wonders of the natural world is how salmon can make it all the way back here um, without any you know maps <laughs> do we know how they recognize their birthplace um, it's thought that uh, they can smell it um, so they can smell uh, their their river you know each river is going to be a little different they can smell the juveniles like the little the fry and, and the teeny little eggs and alvin um, and so they can just follow their nose, basically. Um, that's the current, um, current thought uh, right now is how they found it. And how can you recognize uh, specifically a sockeye salmon versus another species of salmon? Uh, so sockeye salmon are very distinctive. They are bright, bright red. They're it's a, with a bright green head. There's no other salmon that really gets that vibrant. Um, and the sockeye salmon in the Penticton area, anyway, is really the only salmon that you would see, aside from the landlocked kokanee salmon in Okanagan Lake. And they actually do look very similar to sockeye in the red, with the red coloring. Um, they're essentially a landlocked sockeye salmon, the kokanee salmon are. Um, so yeah, only really the only kind of salmon we have around here in Penticton. So I'm here with Lee today. Hi Lee, can you tell us what, um, what group you're with? I'm with the Okanagan, Okanagan River Restoration Initiative, which is run by the Okanagan Nation Alliance. But this program today and the previous week or two weeks of programs with school children has been put on by OSCA, the Okanagan Simulkameen Conservation Alliance. And what is your part in that group? My part in that group is to talk about the river, tell the story of the river, tell the story of why restoration of the river was so very, very important, how we were how channelization affected the river, and we nearly, very nearly lost the sockeye run in the Okanagan River. The Columbia River drainage system is huge. It goes through several states. It starts in BC. The Okanagan empties into the Columbia, yeah. and then they find their way out, to, the fish find their way to the Pacific Ocean through the Okanagan into the Columbia. The Okanagan River is the only river left in the Columbia drainage system in BC wow. that still spawns sockeye salmon. And why is that? Mostly from work that has been done on the river, on the Columbia River. Okay. Uh, if you go up into the Kootenays, there are many dams and there is no passage over them. Okay. So the whole Kootenay system ceased to have sockeye in it anymore. And this is the one remaining. So that makes it a very vital river, an important river to bring the, Columbia, bring the uh, sockeye back. 
Can you please tell us some more about the river restoration? Uh, in, in, I think it was 1989, uh, 1998, there were just over 2,000 fish come back. And we realized that was the brink of extirpation. Okay. You know, one huge uh, killer whale pod could eat 2,000 fish quite easily, and then we'd have no fish up here. So we had a good look at the river of where we could do work, and we began in Oliver. We had the ideal situation to reconnect the river with two ponds that ran beside the river. Uh, we did that. Uh, in concert with that, we put built spawning beds in the river. The sockeye require a certain size gravel to spawn. Uh, if the gravel's too big, they can't move it to make a nest or a red. If the gravel is too small, it washes away with the current, particularly during runoff. And uh, if it's too small, it's just too difficult to retain the red. So we put the right kinds of gravel in and uh, this work took place not very far below a semi-natural area where the few sockeye that came up still did spawn. And then north of um, McIntyre Bridge, north of Oliver, uh, and before uh, Mac uh, McIntyre Bluff, there is a natural, a totally natural stretch of river oh, and they nice. spawned there. And they were the only two places that they were spawning. They couldn't get above McIntyre uh, Bluff because there's a, a drop structure there with the wrong kind of gate in it. Okay. So while we were doing the work in Oliver, there were fish being reared in the hatchery on band lands in Penticton. Uh, McIntyre Bridge was being modified so fish could get over it. We were doing our work. By the time we finished our work, there was the first release of fish were ready to come up. Oh, wow. And they came up and we finished the work and the fish came up and it was the most wonderful thing because this large amount of money and incredible amount of work, a two-year project had been done and there were the fish using it and spawning in good numbers. So it was very, very, very satisfying. That's lovely. Yeah. Can you tell us about um, why salmon are important to us in the Okanagan? I think every species is important. Uh, the salmon are particularly important, are historically okay. extremely important. The First Nations people, the salmon, you could say that was the backbone of their economy. They were an excellent food source. They weren't too difficult to gather. They could dry them. They would have them all winter. As long as they had salmon, they would never be hungry. And their culture revolved around the salmon. So for First Nations, it's extremely important to have the salmon back. But for all of us, it's a renewable resource. And if we have enough salmon in this river, we could again have a fishery on a Soyuz lake. And in fact, we have for two years had an open fishery. This year it was closed because so few salmon came back. But imagine if we had sockeye back in Okanagan Lake. Yes. You know, it's, a, it's a, a food source for all of us. So it's important to First Nations, but it's important to everyone. Okay. And it indicates a better health of the river. Yes. And healthy rivers are important. Healthy water is important to everyone. And like you were saying, this year is a bit of a smaller run. How do you think that will affect us in um, years to come? This year's small run will affect, in about four years' time, the wild run. But we also should remember that we do have this state-of-the-art hatchery uh, down on Band Lands, just opposite the Inalkan Center. And we gather eggs from the fish out of the river and use them in the hatchery. And so every year we have those fish, those little fry that are released into Shingle Creek going out to the ocean in their second year of life. Okay. So that helps to stabilize it somewhat. One of the reasons the, small, the run is so small this year is that in 2013 fry weren't released. Also we think that ocean temperature may have changed and food supply was altered. And this has always happened. It's not a new phenomena. It's just that in the past, in former times, there were so many salmon that they could manage up and down numbers. Okay. When you reduce the numbers, it makes it harder for the species to manage. Okay. And is there anything else um, that's important about why you're here today or any other um, interesting facts that you could tell us? 
Well, I think the public is interested in the run. They've become, they've watched us do the work, both in Oliver and up here, because we have put spawning beds over in the channel there. We've also put spawning beds on the other side of the river. So the public is interested, and the public is noticing that there are fewer fish this year, that there were a lot of fish last year, yeah. and there's fewer this year. And so they're interested. And the more the public knows and understands, I think the more we all want to take better care of the river and the water wherever we are. But this river in particular, because it's our backyard. I just think it's really important that, that people realize that salmon are very, very important, um, both, um, you know, just to, just, just to everyone, um, especially like the, the First Nations people um, are uh, very passionate about salmon. It's really, it's a really important part for them. Um, and the salmon, they really, um, it's really a battle for them. Um, they, you know, they have to cross nine dams to get up here and, and, and go back. Um, you know, pollution, global warming, all those kinds of things can really harm them. Um, and there's a really good graphic here that shows that for every 4,000 eggs that gets laid, only four adult salmon will actually make it back to spawn just because the mortality is so high. Um, so, you know, if, if, you know, if that number gets cut, um, by half, then that you know that's two salmon that make it back, and so that that's starting to get kind of scary.